Next, we'll talk about the IUPAC nomenclature system for alkynes. So if you already have a good handle on naming alkenes, alkynes should be quite easy because it follows the same rules. We just change the ending. Instead of E-N-E, -E, we use the Y-N-E -E ending to specify that it's an alkyne. So just like alkenes, you'll find your longest carbon chain that contains both carbons of the alkyne. In this case, it's just our carbon chain here. Next, we'll number this chain and we'll start at the end closest to the alkyne. So that's going to be the right side. We have eight carbons. Eight carbons comes from octane. But instead of the A-N-E ending, we use the Y-N-E ending. So this will become octine. But we also want to specify where that alkene begins. So we'll put a three in front of the parent name because the alkyne is between carbons three and four. So you can make the parent three octine, or you can write it as oct threeine. Either would be correct. Uh, this system is based on a slightly newer IUPAC um, set of rules. So then, as usual, we write our substituents followed by the parent. In this case, we only have one substituent, which is the 5-chloro group. So let's put that together, 5-chloro, and I'll just use the 3 before the entire parent name, 3-octine. So now let's consider what happens if we have both an alkene and an alkyne in the molecule. How do we name that? So here's an example structure where we have both an alkyne and an alkene. Now your parent chain is going to be the longest carbon chain that contains both unsaturations. So make sure you highlight the pi bond and the double bond. From there, you want to basically number from both ends and figure out which one gives an unsaturation at the lowest number. So if you start numbering from the left, we would get our first unsaturation at carbon two. If you start numbering from the right side, our first unsaturation starts at carbon one. That's going to be better. So that's going to be our preferred numbering. Let's get rid of these. So we number out to seven. Okay, from there, we need to write our name as an E9. That's how the parent ending is going to be. It doesn't matter if the alkene has a lower number or the alkyne has a lower number. It's always going to be an E9. So in this case, we have, let's just start from the beginning. We have two methyl groups. So our substituents would be 3,3-dimethyl. And then our parent comes from heptane. So what we want to do is change this to a hept E9. But you need to specify where the pi bonds are at before the ene and before the ine. So for our parent name, we'll write it as hept. And then the alkene is at carbon one. So we'll do hept one ene. And then the alkyne is at carbon five. So we do five ine. Even if the alkyne had the lower number, you would still put the ene 
first in the name. So it's always E9. It's never going to be I'm in, always E9. Now, one other thing is if you happen to run into a tie where both double bond and triple bond are the same distance away, if that's the case, the alkene will win. So just to show you an example of that, if you were to have this, no matter which end you numbered from, your first unsaturation would be at carbon two. So in this case, the alkene wins over the alkyne, and this would be your correct numbering scheme.